what are some things that you can do to improve your your confidence that you wish you you had those tools when you were younger um the things i would say is just is, is try not have that fear of fear of judgment um fear of making mistakes because it's the best way that you learn and the more you learn and, and gain knowledge and experience the more confident you're going to become one of um i guess one one person that influenced me a lot throughout my career was ross lyon and he used to always say confidence comes from action and i i used to think about it a lot and it's just so true you you if i can give the example of say goal kicking you're going to be more confident going out and having a set on set shot on goal on the weekend if you if you've put through 20 set shots during the week than if you've done nothing and so it comes from action getting to work and repetition and practice and and that will help with confidence massively who else have been some strong influences to your game i know at box hill you, you had a few guys there that you um, that helped you a lot um to a, yeah 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 for sure so yeah i've learned so much from a few people at box hill um if i can name a few people i'd say um probably less so from a mental side but more from you know just a, um, a football i guess physical and, and skill and craft and knowledge of the game point of view marco bello who was a head coach for me for a couple of years and chris newman were massive and sean murphy is then the other one from probably the mental side of the game that had a huge influence on me he was incredibly supportive of the lifestyle i had at the time which was pretty challenging for me um, which entailed three part-time jobs studying full-time at uni and playing at box hill what are some of the things that you either know or um do physically that um you wish you either knew or did uh, back at the beginning of your career uh, what are some of those things i suppose one thing I might mention is is gratitude. I spend a lot of my mm. time um, doing a lot of gratitude exercises, listening to podcasts, doing a, a journal every day just a bit to say what I'm grateful for, sort of three things. And um, that's a fantastic way that I've been able to, yeah, like reset and, and just kind of gain that gratitude and perspective about, you know, that there is more to life than football or, you know, might be whatever as an SNC coach, you know, if something's you're having a hard time. Um, it can be massive with just yeah opening your eyes a little bit and losing that sort of tunnel vision or being stuck in that in that work bubble um so that's that's been huge are there things that you do that you're willing to share on a more mental side that that sort of translate into improved performance like things like i don't know you mentioned journaling or meditation those sorts of things for me now i've got into i used to do a bit of a routine where i'd make myself right every night or second night but i found that didn't work for me so now it's a bit of just when I feel like I can sit down and write for 10, 20, 30 minutes, I'll, I'll do it. And it's just about, it could be about life, about how I'm feeling about something. But if it's more related to my training and um, my football, it's just kind of, um, I guess, a little bit of evaluation of, of the day or my training and how I felt during it, maybe what I could have improved, um, what I did really well, um, that positivity um, and that, Oh, I don't know how to say it, but just kind of encouraging yourself and rewarding yourself for, for the good things you're doing out there, I think is super important. I think we always have this negative bias and we're always hard on ourselves. So you've got to remind yourself of the things that you're doing well. So I just wanted to know like what a week or if you can like, just like tell me like what day by day a week sort of looks like for you in terms of pre-season um, mm -hmm. and like ha how much emphasis you put on like recovery and all that. Yep. Yeah. So firstly, I'd just say like, well done for, for getting through uh, uh, <laughs> this thanks, much rehab yeah. because that's, uh, <laughs> it's impressive and it's, and it's challenging. It's important to note. So yeah, um, appreciate it. Keep up the good work there, but yeah. So a standard sort of preseason week, um, I suppose, um, for me at the football club, uh, sort of like a full-time schedule Monday to Friday and weekends off, um, just yeah. for a bit of context. Um, so we would usually do uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday as our main running training sessions um, and then leg weights on those same days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wednesday would probably be a bit more cruising and just mainly get two sessions in and then Tuesday, Thursday for like upper body um, and then with a bunch of skills and meetings and all that sort of stuff within. And I was wondering if Freo does anything for like you guys. Um, so sort of touching on Noah's point before, like to sort of help you guys mentally um and if that's individual or even to help camaraderie um as well 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there's a couple parts to that sort of question. Um, if I give you a bit of an insight, Frio uh, and whilst Ross was there, but even now um, encourage all of our all players to, you know, do something outside of football, whether it's study or work experience and to sort of prepare for life after footy, um, which I think is is awesome. I know decades ago in the AFL that was not something that was really spoken about and there was no um, yeah, no push from anyone really for for players to do anything outside of football and it, it sort of created issues for players once they were delisted or retired and they yeah. had nothing nowhere to nowhere to sort of go. So I'm incredibly fortunate that I got three years of a degree done before um, coming to Frio and I'm just about to graduate this year, um, which is makes me feel comfortable knowing I have a degree when I when I finish up footy. So 